Uh, water. Very clean water. <laughs> Um. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that is a hundred percent the worst I have ever seen. Wow. That is something else. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. So today we are starting on the 1978 CB550 build. I haven't 100% decided what the overall look and kind of style of this build is going to be. Uh, truth be told, I'm sure it's going to be very similar to the bikes I've built in the past. The idea is to get this bike completely redone back on the road, uh, and then it is going to be available for sale uh, once the build is done. So what I need to do today is not only look at the overall condition of the bike, that will also help us determine the style, but mainly I need to figure out what's going on with this engine. So I bought this bike. I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half ago. I can't remember exactly. The engine is locked up currently. The guy said he was riding it and then it just completely locked up, which is uh, certainly less than ideal. So that's going to be the name of the game today is to figure out how bad the damage is. If we can save this engine, if we need to find another one from a different bike uh, to rebuild. So let's dig into it. Got the bike up in the air and man, this thing is rough. I mean, all of our air filters have just like deteriorated. Everything is coated in either dirt or oil or I don't know, maybe mold corrosion. There's definitely like a green hue to some of this, uh, which is less than ideal. Even worse than that, try to get the light right. I don't know if you guys can see down in that number one spark plug hole, but it is just caked in rust. I believe that's the top side of the exhaust valve, just completely rusty. I'm sure the piston's not in much better shape. Same goes for number four on this side. Just tons of rust down in there. So it looks like this guy just pulled the spark plugs out whenever this thing died on him and then ended up storing the bike outside with no spark plugs. All the water just ran in there and started to rust everything up. So this guy was telling me he was riding the bike. He was just, he used it as a commuter. He was going down the road and all of a sudden it just locked up completely solid right in the middle of riding which is very very bad news for this engine uh, what that most likely was is i bet the oil pump which is right behind this little side cover uh, probably died i don't know where the seal went out whatever the oil pump stopped working the engine lost all oil pressure ran the bearings dry they just completely seized on themselves which means not only is the top end super rusty the bottom end is probably toast as well bearings are probably bad crank is probably scored this thing is most likely a boat anchor uh, for me i am a classic honda and specifically a cb550 hoarder so believe it or not i actually have two spare engines uh, that we can try and rebuild for this bike but today I want to just tear this thing apart as like a fun archaeology project, see how bad the damage really is. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what the oil looks like because I don't know if you can tell that or not, but it is very light brown milkshake color. And what that means is there's water in it, which isn't terribly surprising because like I said, a bunch of water most likely got into these cylinders. That's where all the rust came from. That water just slowly seeped past the piston rings and has been mixing with our oil directly in the crankcase, which is just another check on the, uh, the you know, box, the cons box, so to speak, of this engine. So I'm going to continue to try and uh, tear this thing apart. I will have to see if I can find my chain breaker uh, to break the cam chain, um, because if the engine is locked up and we can't get to those two 10 millimeter bolts, uh, I can't actually get the cam out and to be able to take the rest of this apart, but we'll cross that bridge here when we come to it. I'm going to continue to just rip this stuff off for now. Surprisingly no damage that I can see on the kind of bearing surface that's on this cover. If you look in here, it's definitely a small groove. Yeah, there's a somewhat, oh, there's some rust on the cam over here. 
there's like a little bit of wear marks on these bearing surfaces, but truth be told, I kind of would have expected them to be a bit worse. Well, that's interesting. There should be a 10 millimeter <laughs> bolt that's holding this cam gear on. I'm guessing somebody was in here before me. Maybe the guy tried to fix it himself and realized it was above his pay grade or something and uh, decided to just sell it on. Hmm, how are we gonna be able to get this cam out without turning this? Let's see if that, I wonder if the uh, bolt is on the other side. Feels like it is because I can't get it off right now. Yep. The other bolt is down there. Maybe that's what stopped him. Maybe he got to this point and realized he couldn't get the the cam chain off and then somewhat slapped it back together. Um, what do I want to do? Let me see about just breaking this cam chain because I don't think there's any other way for me to get a tool down in there to be able to get that nut off. Stand by. So getting my chain breaker set up on here. I will reiterate, typically you can get the engine to just rotate because the engine's not locked up and you can access both of these. So you don't normally have to break them. But if your engine is locked up like mine is, unfortunately you don't have much of a choice. So what this tool does is just pushes out one of the rivets in the chain that will allow us to separate it. So we won't be able to reuse this chain uh, in this case because we don't have a master link because this chain is not designed for that. But that's fine because I don't think we would use it anyway. Now I should be able to pull this out. And just like that, she's out. Yeah, surprisingly, I really don't see any wear up here on these bearing surfaces. I would have expected to uh, see that for sure, so. We'll keep, di uh, keep digging. Well, <laughs> well, I didn't have the camera on, uh, but I was going to pull the cam chain tensioner out and it literally disintegrated in my hand from rust. So if there was any question on the condition of the inside of this engine, holy, it is completely destroyed. I mean, this thing, yeah. Yeah, this thing's a goner. Well, let's pull this head off. I'm curious just how bad these pistons are gonna be. The head is unbolted, so it should, be free. Oh yeah. Can get it over this chain tensioner. Pull her out. <laughs> Okie dokie. That's a uh, um, hmm. Hey, one's not bad. Oh man. That is rough. Let's look at these. Look at these cylinders. Pull you guys off the tripod. Okay, yeah. That, uh, that could be a problem. Oh, holy. A full blown chicken nugget in that thing. What the heck is that? <laughs> what the hell? Oh my goodness. Yeah, she wasn't just gonna come back with some Marvel Mystery Oil or a quick top and rebuild. She's a, a bit of a boat anchor, unfortunately. So not that we needed any more justification to uh, throw this thing in the garbage, look down in the crankcase 
it is just rust and just completely destroyed in there. So the entire bottom end of this engine is also, as we expected, garbage. So this is a perfect boat anchor. What I'm gonna do now is I'm probably gonna come out here tomorrow morning and we're just going to take the engine I have over there on the shelf. I'm gonna grab the other engine I have out of storage and we're going to compare those two, go through the condition and we're gonna try and take the three of these and make one good engine for this project. That's really all we need. On a small positive note, I did figure out that it has a Dyna S ignition, which, you know, it looks like to be in fine condition. So, hey, that costs actually very close to what I paid for this entire bike. So, I mean, we really got like a used Dyna ignition with a free bike that came with it. I decided to pull the side cover off because we are probably going to uh, salvage our starter, maybe the stator as well, just any of the components that should still be good, uh, I'd like to keep around. Found an interesting thing under here. So this right here is your oil pump. Right here on the top of the oil pump where this bolt is, there should be an oil pressure indicator uh, sensor. So it's basically a little sensor that when it sees oil pressure over, I don't know, say 10 PSI, it breaks this circuit and your oil light on the dash goes off. When it's below that, your light comes on. This guy was riding with no oil pressure sensor. Sure enough, lost oil pressure, had no idea until the engine completely locked up. I bet if there was a sensor in here, he would have saw the light pop on the dash, could have shut the bike off quick enough, and it would have been a simple fix as opposed to grenading the entire engine. So of the sensors to get rid of on your bike, do not ever get rid of your oil pressure sensor. It's, uh, it can definitely save an engine and, and save you from a terrible day, but kind of interesting that we saw that. Could hear you guys asking, Let's see what the oil looks like. Well, so far, that looks like water. <laughs> uh, water, very clean water. <laughs> um. <laughs> hmm. Okay, okay, it's, oh, and it's done now, not quite. Oh, no. Still going. <laughs> yeah, that is 100% the worst I have ever seen. Wow. That is something else. I pulled this engine off the shelf and went ahead and put it up on the engine stand and I'm gonna start to give it a once over. Uh, first things first, it does turn over nice and smooth. I pulled the spark plugs out for now. So everything feels nice, no, no binding or anything like that. So we're already light years ahead of the old setup. Uh, but this is a good opportunity for me to use a new toy that I got. Let me show you guys. So this is my new tool. It is a wireless camera with a little flashlight on the end and it is small enough to go into the spark plug holes. So the idea is I'll be able to kind of stick this down some spark plug holes, get a better picture of what the inside of engines look like without having to tear them apart. Uh, connects to my phone wirelessly, like I said. Supposed to be like 1080p, mm -hmm. questioning that, looking at it on my phone, but uh, it does have the option to record. So I'll start recording right now and I'll kind of take you guys along with me as we figure this out. So we'll start on this far cylinder over here. Be able to go right down the hole. All right, that's pretty cool. Looks like we got a little bit of debris in there. This bike was stored with no exhaust or carburetors, so it's possible some dust and stuff kind of got blown in there. Uh, not super ideal, but nothing too crazy. Looks like there's still some cross hatching on the cylinder wall. Might be a tad bit of rust on the top where the piston doesn't quite reach. And some carbon on the top of the piston, nothing too crazy. Check out the next one. 
little bit of rust on top of that piston it looks like a little bit of rust on the cylinder wall go to number two okay we can see a little bit of the valve there kind of the same story corrosion a little bit of dust and debris in there finally number one not too bad i don't see any eh, maybe a little bit of rust on the top there and then the piston pretty cool so the initial inspection of this engine looks pretty good but i want to go a step further and get this thing to the point where i can actually do a full compression test Regardless of what those numbers say, I am going to go ahead and plan on doing a top end rebuild on this engine just so that I have peace of mind that all of the seals are all in good shape. We can go ahead and give those cylinder walls a hone since we know there is a little bit of rust on them. Uh, it's just not a bad idea for $100 worth of parts and you know maybe half a day of work. So what I need to do in order to get a compression test done is I need to steal a couple of parts and pieces off of our old engine, like a clutch cover, the oil filter housing, um, starter, maybe one or two other things. Uh, so we can actually put some oil in this engine, hook up a battery to it, spin it over, get a good compression reading on all four cylinders. Then we'll know for sure that this engine is in fact good to go. Uh, and we can go through ordering all the parts to freshen it up. So I just found some very interesting evidence that may have started this whole domino effect that killed this engine. So I was stealing the uh, oil filter kind of housing this thing right here off of this old engine. And when I pulled it apart, it came out just like this. And I've worked on enough of these to think for a second, that's not right. That spring should be on the other side of the filter. Went and grabbed my manual just to double check. And you can see oil filter, O-ring, that's the little spring directly into that housing. So this spring and oil filter were put in backwards. And now that I'm thinking back on it, when I bought it from the previous owner, I'm pretty sure he had told me that he had just had some work done on the bike at a local shop, was driving it home, and that's literally when the engine locked up. I'd bet money that he had an oil change done, and that shop put this oil filter and spring combination in backwards. And that just offset the oil filter enough to block some of these little passages. This is what goes straight through the oil filter caused low oil pressure on his ride home he didn't have an oil pressure switch to warn him of that continued riding with little to no oil pressure locked up the engine then of course parked it with no spark plugs which caused all this problem but that all makes sense in my mind so i think we may have just cracked the case on what killed this engine originally I got the clutch cover and the oil filter put on. I want to show you guys something I made really quick. So uh, these bikes typically just have the idiot light on the oil pump, like I've mentioned, where it just shuts off at, I don't know, say 10, 15 PSI, something like that. I wanted something a little bit more for me testing engines. So what I went ahead and did, if you're unaware, there is a pressurized oil galley that runs underneath the crank all the way across the bottom of these motors that has a little plug on each side just like this. I took one of these plugs, drilled and tapped the center of it so that I could actually thread in a proper oil pressure gauge. So now when we're doing will it run videos and that kind of stuff, I can screw this in and actually know exactly what my oil pressure is inside the engine instead of just assuming that the switch is working properly and uh, this is a lot more accurate. I actually think I might put together some kind of option to have one of these permanently mounted on the bike somewhere up higher up on the head where you can actually see it while you're riding because it would be pretty cool to be able to keep an eye on your actual oil pressure instead of just waiting for a light to come on and hoping you catch it. So I figured I'd show that real quick. Now that the engine has oil in it, I'm gonna go ahead and spin it around with my drill and we can see if this thing works. 
I went ahead and threw the stator on the other side to make sure that, that little plug uh, doesn't push out. It's actually the same oil galley that uh, meets up on this side, uh, on that side, and I just had forgotten that the stator needs to be in place. Uh, otherwise, that thing pops out and shoots oil all over the floor. So I'm going to turn the engine over from this side. Typically, I would not recommend this because this is only a uh, probably an M6 bolt that goes into the crank. It's pretty easy to snap that off. But because this engine is out of the bike, no uh, spark plugs or anything, it should turn over pretty darn easy. Uh, so it shouldn't be a big deal. So I'm gonna put the drill on it. We are gonna turn it clockwise and see how much oil pressure we can build. I would love to see 30, maybe north of 30, uh, with just the drill would be awesome. So let's see what it does. That was 40, 45 PSI of oil pressure with just a drill. So, I mean, that's not a ton of RPMs. That is awesome. That seems to be uh, working great. I did just see a little drop of oil come out of where our threads meet up. Um, I just tightened that by hand, so that's not crazy surprising. But, I mean, 40, I would say 45 pounds of oil pressure. That's sweet. Now that I've got the oiling system up and running and confirmed at a really good PSI, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a starter in the bike. That'll just make it much easier for me to turn the engine over when we go and do our compression test, which is probably the last thing I'm gonna try and do uh, before we get a whole bunch of parts on the way for this thing. So I'm gonna throw a starter in it. We'll see what this compression is. Start over here on number one. Should just be able to touch this to that and I'll turn over. It's like a hundred and call that a hundred and five. Number two. between 95 and 100. Not too bad. Mm, about 90, I'm gonna do it one more time. Mm, right at 100. So sweet, little bit on the low side, uh, on number three, at like 95, 98, whatever it was, that is more than enough for this engine to run well. And honestly, I bet it goes up quite a bit uh, actually running. There's a little bit of rust on the valves. There's a lot of things that will clear themselves up uh, with this bike is like probably 30 seconds of running. I bet all those numbers would jump up five or 10 PSI. But all of that is excellent. Oil pressure is excellent. Compression numbers are well within range. So I'm gonna go ahead and just order a full top end gasket kit. I'm not gonna bother doing piston rings uh, because I don't think it needs it. We will do a quick hone, but nothing that's gonna remove any real material. We just wanna clean up that rust. But this is a very, very healthy engine uh, that once it's freshened up, it's gonna be perfect for uh, our build. So that's what I'm gonna call it on this one, guys. I really only had two main goals for this video. Uh, part one was to figure out what caused the death of this engine. It does unfortunately look like it was, for lack of a better word, incompetence from another local shop. He did tell me the name of that shop. I am of course not gonna mention it. It's a can of worms I don't care to open. 
Uh, I really feel bad for this guy though. I mean, he was riding his bike home from having it worked on and it blew up and he didn't even want to take it back to the shop because he's like, I just don't trust them to work on it. And then he lost interest and ended up selling it to me. So we did figure out what the issue was. We also confirmed that this thing is not at all worth saving. What is worth saving is this guy. So this one is gonna be a perfect donor engine for us. I'm very lucky to have already had it on the shelf. So I'm gonna get a whole bunch of parts on the way for this build. And the next time you guys see it, we're gonna be stripping this thing all the way down to the bare frame, starting to uh, modify some stuff. And you know, we, you guys know what's up with all these builds. So uh, this should be in the not too distant future, assuming all those parts come in in a reasonable time. So I appreciate you guys watching this one as always, and I'll see you on the next one.